1893, Houston, Texas gave blacks their first high school and it was called Colored High. In 1893, 28 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, blacks had their own school. But the school was a white school that they donated to blacks to educate them. And one of the main educators was Reverend Henry Jack Yates. In 1926 of February, Houston School District decided to build the first brand new school for blacks in February 1926 over at 2610 Elgin and they named it after the Reverend Jack Yates and it became the Jack Yates Lines opening its doors brand new which was the first brand new black high school. And it was in Third Ward. And the first principal they had over there, he had already had experience from being the principal over there at Colored High. And that was Mr. James D. Ryan. Mr. James D. Ryan was the first principal for Jack Yates in February 1926 until his passing of 1940. Mr. James D. Ryan was one of the best principals at Colored High. So when they got ready to open up the brand new black high school in Third Ward, they wanted to make sure they send the best principal that they had, which was Mr. James D. Ryan. He came from Colored High School in 19... 25, Mr. Ryan was the principal at Colored High. And when they opened up Jack Yates, they wanted to make sure they got one of the best principals that was available. And that was Mr. James D. Ryan. And when Mr. James D. Ryan took over the principal job in opening up the first brand new black high school in Houston, Texas, Jack Yates, 2610 Elgin, he wanted to make sure that the athletic program would be tops because he was a good educator and he needed somebody that was good in athletics. And he went all the way to Gary, Indiana, who he found out one of his best candidates to be his athletic director and the first football coach of Jack Gates, which was Mr. William Holland. That's Mr. William S. Holland. And later on, after Mr. Ryan died in 1940, Mr. Holland took over the principal job. But Mr. James G. Ryan was the principal for four years at Jack Gates from 1926 to 1940. The first graduating class that came out of Jack Yates at 2610 was in 1927. And Mr. Ronnie Branch's father was one of the first to graduate out of Jack Yates in 1927, along with Miss Bertie Anderson. And Miss Bertie Anderson got to be real close to Mr. James G. Ryan. In fact, Miss Bertie Anderson came out of Fifth Ward. But when she started the school, high school, that was no high school in Fifth Ward. So Miss Bertie Anderson had to catch the bus all the way from Fifth Ward to Fourth Ward to go to high school, which was colored high. And then in 1926, when Mr. Ryan left to go open up the brand new Jack Yates, Miss Bertie Anderson left with Mr. Ryan to be able to graduate out of the first class in 1927. And Miss Bertie Anderson also was hired as a mathematic teacher at Jack Yates by Mr. James G. Ryan. Miss Bertie Anderson is a well historical part of Jack Yates because she was not only a math teacher under James G. Ryan, but she was a math teacher under Mr. Holland, also Dr. Cardwell, Mr. Alexander, 
all at Jack Gate. She retired as a mathematic school teacher, as a math teacher at Jack Gates. Miss Bertie Anderson, along with Mr. Ronnie Branch, father, those are the only two that we know of right now that graduated out of first class out of Jack Gates, 1927. In 1940, when Mr. Ryan passed away, Mr. William S. Holland became principal of Jack Gates High School. And when Mr. William Holland took over the principal job, he went all the way to find one of the best all-star in the Negro Baseball League, which was a major league, baseball team and it was the Negro League because they could not join the Major League Baseball at that time because Jackie Robinson wasn't up yet. So Coach Andrew Pat Patterson was an all-star for the Negro League for the Monarchs and Mr. Holland convinced him to come to Houston, Texas to be the athletic director of the brand new, at that time it was only four years old, to become the athletic director, and his name was Coach Andrew Pat Patterson, Sr. From Gary, Indiana, was revered as coach of Houston Jack Yates High School before Yates. He was an all-around athlete at Wiley College, then an all-star infielder in the Negro League. He stayed at Jack Gates from 1938 all the way to 1968. He got a team to state champion in football, basketball, and baseball. In fact, in 1949, Coach Andrew Pat Patterson won the only triple crown. He won state basketball, state baseball, and state football in 1949. The only coach to ever win a triple crown in one year. And he also was elected in the PIBL, the PBIL, he was elected to Texas High School Coaches Association Hall of Fame, Coach Andrew Pat Patterson. Also in Jack Gates, Mr. Ryan hired the first band director, which was Conrad Johnson Sr. Some of you might know him as Conrad Johnson, his son that also was a band director over at Cashmere High School, and his daughter, Sue Johnson Tankersley was the first music teacher here at James D. Ryan, which later became the middle school of Jack Yates. Jack Yates was getting so crowded when Mr. Ryan passed away in 1940, Mr. William Holland took over, and Mr. Holland also in the 1950s, he appointed an assistant principal, which was Mr. Dawson. And Mr. Dawson was the assistant principal at Jack Yates. And in 1957, Jack Yates was so crowded because the people in Sunnyside did not have a school to go to. Everybody from Sunnyside, Piney Point, Harrisburg, and including Fort Ward, some of the people in Fort Ward, because most of them went to Booker T. Washington. But at the time, Booker T. Washington was getting ready to move out of Fort Ward to go into Studywood. But in 1957, Jack Gates was so overcrowded. In 1957, they gave blacks in Third Ward their first junior high school, which was called William E. Miller. And the principal there was Dawson. Mr. R. M. Dawson was the assistant principal under Mr. William Holland. It was Mr. William Holland who referred Mr. Dawson to be the principal over there at Miller High School, Miller Junior High School. And it was over there on Alameda and Cleburne. And it was in a Jewish neighborhood. So it was the first high school for blacks to cross over because this was once a all white junior high school called Johnston. And Mr. Dawson was the assistant principal under Mr. Holland for over 15 years before he got to be a principal over here at William Earl Miller Junior High School in 1957. Man, 1957, that relieved some of the pressure off of Jack Gates at 2610 Elgin because the junior high school started in the 7th, 8th, and 9th. So everybody that wasn't in the ninth grade in 1957 
From the eighth grade to the seventh grade, they had to come to William E. Miller. That means all the kids that were living out in Sunnyside because it wasn't no words in at that time. All the kids that were living in Harrisburg, Piney Point, they all had to come to Miller Junior High School. But if they was in the 10th grade, the 11th grade, or the 12th grade, they came to Jack Yates' 2610 Elgin because the blacks did not have a school out there in Sunnyside. But number one, Sunnyside was not part of Houston until 1956. And HISD refused to build the school out there in Sunnyside for the blacks. So, Mr. Evan E. Worthen was always putting money into the black education. Even back in the 1950s, he beginning to give out the first Worthen Scholarship for blacks. And the Worthen family continued to give scholarships out even to today. The Worthen High School Scholarships have always been around. And Mr. Evan E. Worthen was a real estate out there in Sunnyside, and he seen the kids that was going from Sunnyside, catching the bus, all the way off of uh, Cullen now, of uh, Scott, all the way to Third Ward to get their high school diploma. And HISD said they did not have any money. So Mr. Evan E. Worthen took his property and took his money to build the first Worthen and it was built in January of 1958. And he promised all the people out there in Sunnyside that Worthen would be finished before the new Jack Yates because HSD had put all their money into the new Jack Yates over there at 3703 Samson. So they didn't have any money to build another black high school for blacks. This is the original Worthen opened up in January of 1958 with Mr. Evan E. Worthen property and his money. And then in 1962, HISD put the money up to build a new Worthen in January of 1962, right there on the corner of Reed Road in Scott. And the brand new senior high school of Evan E. Worthen was now a brand new school. And the original Worthen became Christopher Alex middle school or junior high school. Now, in September 1958, Third Ward got its first and only senior high school. And that was Jack Gates at 3703 Sampson with a brand new principal, Dr. John E. Cardwell, which was a principal over there at Phyllis Wheatley. Dr. Cardwell was the first football coach over at Phyllis Weekly. Dr. Caldwell was hired by Mr. E.O. Smith. And when Mr. E.O. Smith died, Dr. Caldwell took over the principal job over at Wheatley. And he opened up the brand new Wheatley Senior High School in 1950 over there at 4900 Market Street. So when the new Jack Gates opened up, HISD, Boys decided to leave Mr. Holland over at the old Yates, which was James D. Ryan, and bring in Mr. Dr. Caldwell. And Dr. Caldwell was an All-American at Colored High School. He was a local person. Mr. Holland was not local. Mr. Holland came from Indiana. Dr. Caldwell had a doctor degree from the University of Michigan. So Dr. Caldwell, what they said, was more qualified to take over the brand new state-of-the-art Jack Yates 3703 Sampson Senior High School in September of 1958. When Dr. Caldwell took over in September 1958, he bought all of his staff from Phyllis Wheatley over there with him. Such people as Mr. O.B. Harris, Miss Cunningham, along with Mr. J.R. Alexander, along with all the office help he took from Wheatley and he brought it over there with him over there to Jack Gates. And all the office help that was over there at Jack Gates at 2610 Elgin stayed over there at Ryan Junior High School now. And Dr. Carwell also bought Mr. J.R. Alexander 
to be his assistant principal over there at the New Jack Gates, the 3703 Sampson Senior High School now. In September 1958, Coach Andrew Pat Patterson Sr. had a choice to make. He could either stay over there with the person who hired him, which was Mr. William Holland, or he could go over to the New Jack Gates with Dr. John E. Cardwell. And Dr. Cardwell had also was prepared to, to bring Frank Walker over to be the football coach over at Jack Yates. But the HIS athletic director, Joe Matusa, said no, that they has no influence over the athletic department. That's his decision. And him and Coach Patterson was the best of friends. And he asked Coach Patterson, do he want to go over to the new Jack Yates with Mr. Dr. Cardwell, or do he want to stay over there at Ryan Junior High School, which was Mr. William Holland who hired him. But Coach Patterson wanted to make sure that he made the right decision, and Mr. Holland is the one that told him that the young kids for the future need his guardians, his guardians to be able to show them the future on how to be young, productive men. So he needed to go over there and work with Dr. Cardwell over to the new Jack Gates. And that's when Coach Patterson made his mind up to go over and work up under Dr. Cardwell. But the football program all belongs to Coach Andrew Pat Patterson and Dr. Cardwell was going to make sure that he wasn't going to have nothing to do with interfering with Coach Patterson program. Because he knew how hard Coach Patterson had worked with that program because he was at Phyllis Wheatley working with the program. But Dr. Cardwell was under the impression just in case Coach Pat Patterson wanted to stay over there with Mr. Howland over at Ryan, he was prepared to bring Frank Walker from Phyllis Wheatley over there to be his football coach. But since Coach Patterson wanted to leave to go over to the new Jack Yates, therefore the offer was off the table for Frank Walker to come to Jack Yates and Frank Walker stayed over there to Phyllis Wheatley where the Turkey Day Classic got to be the classic that it is thanks to Coach Frank Walker and Coach Pat Patterson. Coach Frank Walker did not want to leave Wheatley, but if he had to, he would have left Wheatley to follow Dr. Cardwell because it was Dr. Cardwell who gave him the first job of being Phyllis Wheatley football coach. Plus, Frank Walker did not want to leave Phyllis Wheatley because he graduated from Phyllis Wheatley. In 1964, Dr. John E. Cardwell, he retired to go to work in HISD administration building. And when he retired, the assistant principal got to be the principal, Mr. J. R. Alexander. In 1965, Mr. J. R. Alexander became the principal of Jack Yates, and his assistant principal was Mr. O. B. Harris. Mr. O. B. Harris became the assistant principal and both came from Phyllis Wheatley. Mr. O. B. Harris was a math teacher over at Phyllis Wheatley, and he had been used to working with Dr. Cardwell. So when Dr. Cardwell came over to Jack Yates in September 1958, he brought along Mr. O. B. Harris as a math teacher, and when he got ready to retire and move up to administration to HASD, Mr. Alexander became principal, and Mr. Alexander promoted Mr. O.B. Harris to his assistant principal, along with Mr. Thomas. Ms. Cunningham was also part of Dr. Carwell staff over at Phyllis Wheatley. So in 1958, when Dr. Carwell left Phyllis Wheatley to come over to open up Jack Yates in 1958, Ms. Cunningham came along with him and she became the Jack Yates Dean.